Michael Jordan's Wizards years have been a subject of debate over the years. Did those years tarnish his legacy or add to his legend? I'd say those two years in DC were highly underrated and if anything, it added to his legend. I will even go as far as saying what MJ did for the Wizards at roughly the same age was even more impressive than what LeBron is doing now for the Lakers. I know I'll get called a hater for this, but let me just be clear. Of course I'm impressed at all by what LeBron is doing at his age, but let me tell you why I find Jordan's time with the Wizards to be even more impressive. MJ did not have anyone nearly as good as Anthony Davis on his team. MJ played through much more gruesome injuries at an old age than LeBron ever had in his Laker years. LeBron's done on his share of load managing while MJ played 82 games on one knee. MJ had far better fundamentals that made up for no longer being the athlete he was when he played for the Bulls. His footwork, ball handling, his ball fakes, off ball movement, and quicker decisions allowed him to turn the ball over less than LeBron does and MJ with the Wizards had a higher usage rate than LeBron does this year. MJ shot 82% from mid range during his time with the Wizards, something LeBron could never dream of at any point point in his career. MJ was also a better closer and put in far more effort on the defensive end as a wizard than LeBron has throughout this season. LeBron's stats this year may look more impressive, but today's stats are very inflated because of how much more offensive orientated the rules have made the game now than it ever was before. League average scoring in 2002 was 95 and a half points per game, while now it's 114.6 points per game. There's no question Michael Jordan on the Wizards was wasn't even close to what he was on the Bulls, but not as far off as his basketball reference page would suggest without any context. Even three years without playing a single NBA game, MJ was far from washed up on the Wizards. He still had a lot left in the tank until his knee gave out. Jordan at this age is better than about 90% of the players you know, today. Going into the 2001-02 season, the Wizards were coming off a whopping 19-63 season. They had the number one overall pick and drafted one of the biggest busts in NBA history. The Wizards were dead last in defense in the previous season and were not much better on offense. They were just moving on from Mitch Richmond who was supposed to give the team a veteran start coming in a trade from Sacramento only for him to lose his shooting touch that he previously displayed. The Wizards also traded Juwan Howard, their leading scorer from the previous year before Jordan suited up to play for them. The team's best player outside of Jordan was a very young Richard Hamilton. The most significant offseason additions outside of Jordan were Kwame Brown, Tyron Liu, and rookie Brendan Haywood, who the Wizards acquired via trade after he was drafted 20th overall by the Cavs. Jordan did not ask Wes Unseld, the GM of the Wizards at the time, for another star for him to pair up with. Before the season even began, Michael Jordan already broke his ribs playing in a pickup game with Meta Santa Ford Artest to add to the fact that it's been three years since he played his last NBA game. Jordan also developed tendonitis in his right knee when he began his workouts to prepare for his wizard stint and had to have fluid drained out of his knee multiple times as a result while playing for the Wizards. He also had tendonitis in his wrist during this time. Jordan scored 26 points per game in his first full month as a wizard, but it took some time for the Wizards to get going. Jordan had to take nearly 25 shots per game to start the year and shot under 41%, but let's keep in mind he's been out of the game for three years and he's playing for a team that just won 19 games the year before. Four. One game in the early going that should be highlighted, even if it was a game the Wizards lost, Jordan scored 32 points against the Celtics in Boston. In the fourth quarter of that game, he finally took on the assignment of guarding Paul Pierce and Pierce only scored two points throughout that quarter. In December of that season, the Wizards were 11-4 and, and Jordan was shooting less with better efficiency. He even had a 51-point game against the Hornets that month and followed that up with a 45-point game against the Nets. Jordan even even scored the first 13 Wizards points in his 51 point game. Not to mention Jordan shot 53% in his 51 point game and 50% in his 45 point game. Look at him using his left as an old man by the way for all that nonsense on the internet about him not being able to use his left. Also Rip Hamilton did not play in either of those games so Jordan had to carry an even bigger load than he normally had to. Hamilton missed 19 games that season. Jordan had four 
40 other games where he scored at least 40 that year. Only Allen Iverson, Shaq, and T-Mac had more 40-point games that season than Michael Jordan did. As for 50-point games, just five other players scored 50 or more that season. Scoring 50 to 70 points wasn't nearly as common back then as it is now due to the slower pace and rules not favoring the offense to nearly the extent that they do now. By the All-Star break, when on the verge of turning 39, MJ had what was, let me say it again, a team that was 19-63 and 63 the previous year at 26-21. and 21. That was good enough to be the 5th seed in the East at the All-Star break. It was right before the All-Star break when MJ tore his meniscus in the same knee that he had tendonitis in after he banged knees with teammate Etan Thomas. Until the meniscus tear happened, with no major additions outside of Jordan from the previous year, the Wizards went from dead last in defensive rating to around league average. Not only that, in the previous 10 games before the meniscus tear, Jordan averaged nearly 29 points per game. Five of those games were against teams that made the playoffs that year. After the All-Star break, MJ tried to play through his knee injury, but that did not go well. He only averaged 19 points per game on just 40% as the Wizards lost eight of their next nine games, with Jordan playing in all but just one of those nine games. MJ had to undergo surgery and miss the next 12 games, which the Wizards went 4 and 8 in. MJ could have just sat out the rest of the season and he would have had 24 points per game on the season. I think he should be applauded for the fact that he didn't in order to protect his stats. He played seven more games coming off the bench on minutes restriction and averages 12 points per game while shooting under 40% before being ruled out for the season. The Wizards were 3 and 4 in those seven games Jordan returned and when 3-5 and five in the remaining games Jordan had to sit out. Even with his dip in scoring after his injury, he still finished the season scoring just under 23 points per game, which was good enough for ninth in the league, and almost 25% of the Wizards' 92.8 points per game as a team. The Wizards missed the playoffs, but a 38-39 to 39 year old Michael Jordan being the only major addition to the team, they nearly doubled their win total from the previous year. If only he didn't blow out his knee, the Wizards easily would have made the playoffs and maybe even won a playoff series. Assuming nothing else would have changed in the standings from the time Jordan injured his knee and by the end of the regular season, the Wizards would have faced the very team Jordan scored 51 against in the first round. The following season, while recovering from knee surgery and turning 40, Jordan just didn't have it in his legs the way he used to. In spite of that, he yeah, averaged 20 points a game at the age of 40 on one leg because his, his knee was messed up, and he, and he played 82 games at the age of 40 on one leg and played all 82 games. So, I mean, I just tell you who he is. That's uh, crazy. 82 games. Tyron Lue was there for both seasons, so he knows. Nowadays, even when guys are young and fully healthy, it's rare for them to play all 82 games. Jordan even scored 43 in his first game as a 40-year-old against the top-ranked defense in the league that year. He had two other 40-point games that season. Oh, and again, for all that nonsense about MJ having no left hand, look at him going left here as a 40-year-old. One more thing I may add to Michael Jordan's second season in D.C., and the last of his career. The Wizards team defensive rating went from 21st after plummeting from Jordan's meniscus tear to 18th while he was able to play all 82 games on a bad knee the year he turned 40. I will die on the hill that Wizards Jordan would easily dominate in today's NBA with no hand checking and with the implementation of freedom of movement. He was playing more minutes than most stars would today. He even did it on a bad knee in his final season while playing all 82 games. His 37 minutes per game in his final season in which he turned 40 was not even top 20 back then but would be 6th today. Also goats don't chase easy rings. Jordan could have reunited with Phil Jackson to make Shaq and Kobe a legitimate super team and won 2 easy rings with them. I'm more than convinced that if Jordan joined the Lakers as their third guy they would have won 4 in a row instead of 3. MJ joined a bottom of the barrel team and only his knee stopped him from leading them to the playoffs when he suited up to play for the love of the game knowing he had nothing left to prove. What do you think of Michael Jordan's Wizards tenure? I look forward to reading your comments down below. And yes, I am wearing this jersey for the sake of making this video. 
If you enjoyed this video, do you want to help it reach more people? Easy way to do that is to like this video. If you could please consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss another video, your support is much appreciated. If you're already subscribed, thank you for, for your support as always. Links to my social media are down in the description if you want to see my more immediate reactions to things going on in the sports world. If you'd like to see my most recent video or the one that YouTube recommends, both are up above. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.